Hey guys, Ian here from 585 Outdoors and today I'm talking about First Light and I'm going to give you guys a 2.0 updated version of my layering guide. So here we go. So I've been using First Light um, clothing for about three years now. Um, started to get into it right around like 2017, spring of 2018 is really when I was starting to kind of get f both feet deep and jumping right into the you using their stuff. And I get I did my previous layering guide shortly around that that time, um, but I wanted to give an updated version so that way the terminology of their products is well just so it matches. Because uh, they've updated their product line list since then, obviously. Um, so there is some crossover from the older pieces that I mentioned, but you wouldn't know that unless you've really been accustomed to First Light. So I'm just going to update it with the product lines that they have, and which a lot of this stuff that you will see me wear, um, but I'm going to mention, is available. The pieces that aren't, I'll insert a substitute for that. It's a more modern take on that older piece of gear. So how I'm going to break this down, I'm going to talk about the temperature ranges in which I would, what, what I'm going to wear. Um, so let's break it down real quick. 70, I'm going to go when it's hot, 75 to 65. Talk about when it starts to cool down, when it gets to be in that lower 60s, but more of that 55 to 45. When it starts to get cold, that 45 to 32. And then when it's just down outright freezing, 32 and below. That's what I'm going to break down for you guys and just give you the layers and the pieces that I have. Um, talk a little bit about some other kind of supplemental pieces that you can put in depending on what kind of hunting that you're going to do. I am going to talk about First Light Spectre. It did come out. We'll talk about it. And then last but not least, I am going to give you some pros and cons and just some things that I found over time of using these garments over three years. A lot of these are that old. Um, things that I found of concerns and that First Light may have actually now have answers to those con concerns. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right in. Let's talk about what I'm going to wear when it's hot. So when it's hot, and I'm talking like 75 degrees to 65 degrees, lowest maybe like low 60s, I want to wear as little as possible, kind of prepping more for that heat side of it, so that way I'm not over heating but I also am carrying some insulating layers for that quick just throw right over top of me um, to get that heat in once the sun goes down or starts to go down and the temps begin to cool off. So let's talk next to skin really quick. Um, I don't actually have a like the boxer brief that they actually have um, but it works. The, I have something similar. It's a merino based boxer brief. It works great phenomenal. I can just wear those and I don't really even have to throw on like boot cuts or long johns even into like the 50s. So excellent, excellent garment to wear. You're maximizing that ability to have that versatility. There we go. Versatility of merino wool to keep you cool when it's really hot, keep you also really warm when it's really cold. So I'll wear that and then I'll wear the triad, which I think it's the triad sock and it's the 1.0, but it's their compression socks that they have. It's made out of merino wool, a little bit of synthetic in there, but it's structured in a way so that way when you're wearing boots, it's not, you're not going to get blisters on the back of your heel or any of those really high wear spots. It's padded so that way you can be on your feet for long periods of time. So I'll wear those, those two things. And then there's a couple different ways you can go. I don't have the corrugate guide pants. I want to get them, but I don't have them. Um, but the Obsidian Merino wool pants, the 1.0s, I have those. Those are jack of all trades, very versatile. They can handle that 80 degree heat, meaning it's not going to make you super hot. I have two variants that I own. I have a flat dark earth and a fusion pattern obsidian merino pant. Basically, I kind of flip-flop between the two in the fall, primarily for deer hunting. I wear the more de flat desert earth that kind of fit in more with those brown color palettes and color tones. And then for turkey season, I'd like to use that fusion pattern, or if I'm up in a tree stand, just to help further blur out my outline. 
These pants are great. They're really quiet. They're mostly a merino wool blend. There is a little bit of um, spandex to it, but it's that more of that merino ripstop kind of um, material. So that makes it really, really quiet, which is what, exactly what you want inside the deer woods or turkey woods, or especially if in your, in your uh, tree stand or not brushing up against anything or if you sit down on your tree stand it's not making any noises it's just nice calm cool keeps you night nice and cold but also keeps you really warm um, when the temps start to drop down into the low 60s okay so for the top i have a crew which is the air wool both of these are going to be the air wool or wick um, would be the another name for it um, probably nowadays um, i have a crew top meaning there's no hood B right here in Fusion. And I also have their Wick hoodie, which they do have still. And it's basically the same thing as the Wick crew top. It just adds a little bit of a hood. You'd be surprised at how effective and how um, much more heat and warmth is retained when you just add a hood to a garment and you just throw that over top of your head. It's invaluable. I like to go with the hooded versions. That's nine times out of ten. That is, if I need to go light, that is the one I'm going to grab is the wick hoodie, just so I have the added warmth piece. Now, let's talk about the insulating layers over top of this. So, sitting out, glass in a field, sitting up in a stand, it's blazing hot, sun's beating down, and then now we're in that prime hour where the sun's starting to go down, just touches the ridge top, and immediately Boom, you feel the temperature start to drop. My insulating layer through this is just something really just quick. I just need it right now because I know it's going to hit me like a ton of bricks. Is the Catalyst Soft Shell Jacket. I'll throw that on. FD, well, it's in conifer, which is their green. It's, it's a soft shell, so therefore it's a very soft exterior. It's very quiet. Um, doesn't really cut wind, but it does a great job of delivering that insulation when you need it right there while not adding some nylon pieces that might be a little more noisier so you still retain that that stealth that would be my system for those types of days which is typically early season you you got it spring yeah when it's really hot so let's now talk about that 55 upper 50s low 40s stage now this is where things are going to kind of blur just a bit um, it just, it's kind of, it's going to depend on what end of the spectrum that temperature is going to sit on. If it's, let's, so let's just talk about the upper 50s side of it. Base layers, merino boxer brief. If I'm doing more of a tree stand hunt, the only thing I'll add is the fuse or wick boot top long john over top of those. Now the reason why I get the boot top is I don't, go for that full long time because I can still get the same effect by just using my socks. So that boot cut goes about bound down to about mid calf. I'll pull the socks up over top, top of that, boom, long john. It's right there. It's fine. Um, then pant wise, I will use the obsidian merino pants in the upper 50s, mid 50s. We start to drop into that 50 degrees. I won't wear the obsidian pants. I'll actually switch over and wear the Catalyst pants. They're fleece lined, little more insulation um, within the actual pant itself. So I'm trying to use that a little bit more to my advantage, especially if I'm stationary. That's when I may also take off the fuse wick boot cut, John. May not wear that unless it's definitely in the 40s then yes i'm wearing all those but it's that's just kind of like a fine tune like just a little ticker ticker um kind of a setup for that but generally if i'm up in the upper 50s to mid obsidian pants drop below that catalyst saw shell pants gonna wear those um once we get into the 40s wearing all layer systems um when you're in that lower 50s Depending on what the circumstances and what I'm doing hunting wise, whether I'm on the ground where I'm going to be walking a little bit more or being up in a tree, that's going to determine what, if I do both layers or just run based off the lining of the Catalyst soft shell itself. Now let's talk about the top. Upper half, very simple, clean cut, basic. Um, I'll start with the wick crew cut. Um, shirt long sleeve shirt i'll wear that next to skin and then i'll have the calamith hoodie which is a grid fleece i'll put that over top of that 
there is one two layers and that's like the mid layer it, then that hoodie has a hood again the importance of hoods if it's airy like if i let's say it's on the 55 to 60 kind of range but it's going to be i'm going to be hanging out in the shade quite a bit or there's a bit of a breeze then the insulating layers i pick over top of that are going to be really interesting i'm either going to go with the uncompagre vest vest i love vests or i'll go with the catalyst soft shell jacket again I'll either throw one of those two or both of them on. Both of them will probably come in, especially if it's going to, like, if it really starts to get cold more, if I'm sedentary, like, up in a tree, then I'll wear both. Um, but, like, this past year, I just actually wore just the Wick Crew, Klamath hoodie, and a vest, and I was solid. I was good. I was fine. Um, if you really are worried, then, like, or you see, like, a lot more wind, um, probably when we get into the 40s, I may swap out the Wick with either the Fuse or a Kiln weighted crew. So it's just a little heavier next to skin and then still keep the clam Emmeth hoodie over top of that. So now coming up, now you're gonna see a lot of the showcasing of the different types of gear pieces that come in because now when we drop below 40 degrees, you hit that 40 degrees to 32, or even like the lower 50s uh, with a little more wind that's when we have to start using a little heavier insulating kind of pieces so that's where a lot of like the obsidian merino pants and that stuff that's where that goes away for the year um i really won't bring those out anymore um unless it's just like an added base layer underneath what i'll eventually talk about that i got um that you can also use when it gets to be this temp temp temperature range all right, so let's talk about when it starts dipping into like that 50 degrees and to about upper 30s. So that 50 to 35, um, there's a lot of different kind of like, there's some playing room within this, but this is where we're gonna bring out some of more of our heavier pieces. And these are, I'm gonna try and supplement, those are some of the things I'm gonna say that I have. Um, that they don't make anymore, um, unless you can find it um, used, but I'll give you their equivalent um, that they have now. So let's start base layer. Guess what? Standard cocktail is the last one. Except switching out maybe a little heavier boot cut John along with that on um, the kill uh, weight, kiln weight, the cold weather sock. You can get the cold weather OTC 2.0 sock. Um, but then the pants, the obsidians are gone, not gonna wear those. So I'm either gonna wear the catalyst soft shell if I'm gonna be more active or that's going to be a base layer that I'm then going to wear underneath a bib. Um, for this one, the I have the Sanctuary bibs. That's a bit overkill for this particular temperature. I mean, unless you're planning some all-day sits, which the beginning of November can be within this temp temperature range. If you want all-day sits and never feel cold ever from the, like, the waist down, chest down, get the Sanctuary bibs. You're all set for, <laughs> you're set for like the next two. But the solitude level bibs are like that, not as heavy as that. That would be kind of the equivalent of the old Woodbury um, weight. So the solitude bib, solitude jacket will also work in this time, um, this weight frame too. But that depends on whether you're in a tree stand or you're going to be more actively kind of doing some still hunting, covering some ground up in the Adirondacks. If you're covering ground up in the Ad Adirondacks, I do the Catalyst soft shell. Don't too much with the bibs that's these are meant for being a little more active supplemental piece if you are that more active still hunter covering up some hills of high tour uh, the adirondacks anywhere down south there's a lot of hills and drain images but you're going to sit still and kind of just sit in one place for a bit but you're afraid you're going to get cold a good supplemental piece to other than bibs would be actually their uncompagre puffy pant which is this they're extremely light, they're easy to pack in. They actually have a full length zip from the hip down to the ankle. You can take them right off, slide them right over your pants, zip, whoop, and then you can sit there and you have that well, solitude bib level insulation, but in a packable pant. Also, if you don't have the money to afford the bibs, that's a little bit cheaper, these pants, especially if you get in the solid color get those pants they're a little noisier than like what the bibs would be but it's a good workaround than getting just the bibs so fun fact for you so that's going to take care of the legs now upper body this is where i got 
My next to skin, I want to be on the lighter side, so that way it very quickly can react to whether I need to be warmer, whether it be cooler, more so if I need to be cooler, because um, I'm going to be walking around kind of getting out, and I'm more preparing for now that cold side of me becoming sedentary. This is when I tend to want to be in a tree more, obviously, because this will cover right about end of October into the beginning of November, which is prime time. So I'll start off with the Crew Cut Wick hoodie. If it's more so going to be on that warmer side of things, or I'm going to have to hike in a little bit farther, and I know that. If it's a more of a quicker walk, or I'm going to do like a more of an all-day sit, I'm going to want to bump up to probably the kiln level, or the fuse. Well, fuse, fuse first, then kiln. Kiln's like right at like the second... Uh, heaviest layer that they have which is now going to lead right into the heaviest one that I also have that I would wear over top of that which would be my furnace Henley that's like the heaviest merino base layer that they have um, this would be my mid layer so this is where the bulk of where I want to keep some body weight and start generating some warmth would be with with that garment right there now on top of that this is where Got some interesting little cocktail combo kind of things. If we're airing towards that upper side where it's just 50 degrees, I can throw on, I actually don't even, wouldn't even need to throw on like an Uncompagre puffy vest if I'm going to wear a bib. If I'm going to wear the Sanctuary bibs, I'll stop right at the Henley and leave that right there. Won't go any higher than that. And then just throw the Woodbury or a, uh, equal, uh, equal level is the Solitude. I'll throw that over top of my core. Now if I'm going to be more active, let's say doing more of like a still hunting type thing, where I need, I'm going to have some moments where I'm going to be standing still, and it's more towards that colder end of that of, of this range, that's where I'm going to throw the Uncompagre vest over top of that. I want to target my core. You have to keep your heart warm, that'll keep your extra digits and everything else warm. So the vest is a good way to target, target that. Then when you couple it with the Woodbury or a Solitude level jacket that would work. But that Solitude jacket really isn't built for if, let's say, you're now the guy that's hunting out in the Adirondacks and you're going up and down hills or high tour and you really aren't the guy that wants to be able to just, like, doesn't like sitting still and you're going to move and still, and still hunt. Get the Uncompagre jacket. This is mine. It's actually an ash gray because I actually plan on wearing this either in a tree when there's no leaves around and there's more of, like, some, like, ash bark type of bear bark kind of going on. So that way it blends in with that and the skyline. Also in winter time when there's actually some snow on the ground is typically when I would actually really wear that. And that's like gun season. For me, I will still hunt in gun season. I can do that. And that's where that jacket fits more in my hunting style. The Woodbury is going to be my go-to or the Solitude ja jacket if you can't find the Woodbury. That is my go-to during this time period when I'm up in a tree with a bow in my hand, waiting for deer, doing rump things and doing deer, deer things. That's gonna be the jacket that I use. Now, let's talk about when it gets frigid. I mean like upper 30s and below. More so 32 and below because I've had to experience this and I got to test some of these new pieces in 19 degree weather. So when it's like frigid, I mean like 19 degrees, yada, yada, yada. You want to go up to the heaviest, heaviest that you 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 can get. You can still do the same combos um, of like the boot top with the sock. Up the weight of the boot top. Get like furnace kiln, the heaviest one that you can find. Wear that. Catalyst soft shell pants underneath your bibs. If you're going to choose a bib and you typically live in this northern, northern, northeastern kind of climate, I meant... Where in December, there may not be a lot of snow, but it's going to get cold. And you're, or you're going to be out there for long periods of time. When it's like 32 degrees or like 29 in the 20s, get the Sanctuary bibs. It's worth the money. It's worth the comfort. These things, it's like a giant zero degree sleeping bag that they turned into pants. It's, it was unreal how warm I was from here, well really waist down. Up here got a little cold because my jacket didn't really match that level of heat. So I was dissipating more heat. <laughs> and it was really windy. But lengthwise, like it, I was toasty. As soon as it got up into like 35 degrees, that, that, the sanctuary bibs are overkill. To be, to be honest, I mean, I could have taken a nap. I was so cozy. It was like taking like a little fluff tortilla, just roll myself up on the couch. That's what it felt like. It was excellent. 
it's worth the money. They're worth the money. When you get frigid, you want to up that. Catalyst soft shell, sanctuary bibs, can't go wrong with that combo. Now let's talk about the chest. Chest, again, furnace. Try and find a furnace crew, or if you can't really, there's not really like a furnace crew, I do like a kiln crew. Furnace, Henley, the vest, the Uncompagre vest, or the Catalyst soft shell vest, or the Sawtooth hybrid soft shell vest. Either of those, actually, yeah. Either of those will work. I just like the Young Compagre because it has a little more, it's like a puffy jacket, um, which has some more insulation to, insulation qualities to it, though either, any of those will actually work. And then, if you can get the money, get the Sanctuary jacket. If you can't, the Solitude jacket will work just fine, but you'll be able to stay out there longer than you would otherwise and that pretty much covers that now there's some other little tips and tricks that i've kind of learned about how to keep myself warm especially when it is frigid like that what's nice about having a vest is there's pockets actually inside the vest i'll take those big flipping body warmers or hand warm warmers and i'll shove two of those in those pockets zip them up throw the jacket over top of that over top of the bibs toasty Tacking that core, trying to keep that core ni nice and warm. Then I put hand warmers in the pockets of my jacket, so that way my fingers are nice and warm. Now, the accessories and stuff that I actually throw over top and I carry as well. The Tag Cuff Merino Beanie, excellent. Um, I have one infusion and one in, in, bla in Blaze Orange. These always go with me. Um, again, you'd be shocked at how much of a difference they make when you put them on top of your head as soon as you feel that you're starting to get cold. These merino products between the hood and the beanie, yes, cannot go wrong. And then for my hands, surprisingly, I actually really enjoy their Talus fingerless merino gloves. They work really, really, really well, especially, but when I actually put them in conjunction with like having some uh, hand warmers in the pockets of my jackets, so that way I can just shove my hands in there, get them nice and warm, get the digits nice and working again. So I just like having my dexterity in my hands. So really, like through the 50s, through everything else, I won't wear gloves until gun season, until it gets real cold. In gun season, I just need this finger right here to be exposed so that way I can maneuver and execute. Have my dexterity. Bow season, I'll suffer through it, put the hand warmers in, I'm all set. So by the time that this video airs, it's already been announced that First Light has now released some of their newer products one of which is their brand new whitetail specific camouflage pattern specter i do plan on trying to get my hands on some of that to give it a go i foresee that being really really good early season basically the month of october and early november up until all most of the leaves start to drop that pattern is going to be phenomenal in new york state as well as turkey season as well especially towards the later end of turkey season when it really starts to get green that's where I see that pattern really shining. So again, I'm hoping to get my hands on some of that. So in my three years of using First Light, the Obsidian Merino pants, if they are gonna be cheaper than the new Foundry pants that they just released, the Foundry Corgate, the Foundry Obsidian, and the Foundry Catalyst, which is going to come. And those are all like the three original pants. So I actually have the original Obsidian Merino pants and the original Catalyst Soft Shell pants. My thing that I found, if you haven't noticed or you can't see, I am not a string bean slim dude. I'm not even like f kind of fit, but not really fit. I am a I am a thick muffin, and my thick turkey thighs like to rub together. So one of the things that I found with that uh, merino ripstop fabric is in the crotch or the uh, gusset, crotch gusset. Uh, over time, I've worn out actual holes in the pants. Worn out holes. And that's just because I got like luscious thighs. Sorry, can't help it. Um, but if you're really good with needle, or now what's excellent is that First Light came out with their patch tape. That will also work phenomenally for this particular fix as well where you can actually reinforce, put that tape over top of those holes, it's fine, you can save the pant, or take a little bit of like more durable cloth uh, fabric 
and just sew that on there. That's if you can't afford the foundry pan. Now, I don't have, have not had my hands fully on the foundry pan, but from what I've heard is they've described the, found, the foundry pan and the changes they made. They actually reinforced and changed out that particular section of the obsidian pan. It has it more like what the Catalyst Soft Shell has, which is more of like a neo, like more like a spandexy synthetic kind of um, material. There, that's going to help out and reduce that problem right there, uh, along with some other wear and tear spots that they found. So, really, that's the only gripe I, I really had or found with these pants, along with just like abrasion from thorns and everything else on the soft shell materials but naturally that's what comes with the soft shell is it's going to be more sensitive and delicate first light already answered all this with the found the foundry pant so if you can afford the money to get the found foundry pant you won't run into this issue if you don't have the money for that just get yourself a little bit of that rip, that rip stop tape it's 10 bucks just get it you know it's going to come unless you're a twig string bean but just know that the obsidian merino pants a little bit more delicate um but it's the trade-offs of that in terms of functionality and versatility can't beat it that's really what all i found honestly uh the tailless like fingerless merino gloves if you do run into like some thorns it does kind of break kind of the glove just a bit um, but nothing like catastrophic that you can't fix with, you just have to get handy with a little needle and, and thread. And honestly, it doesn't take very long to fix that, re-patch and re-sew that little hole up um, that kind of occurs over time with that. But other than that, like I've had the no problem with the beanies, no problem with socks. Socks I still wear all season. I have two pairs, I'll swap, use them heavily throughout the entire season, no holes, anything like that. So... I, little things here and there when it comes to first light. I really hope you found this video helpful, insightful. Um, as again, 1.0 was pretty sweet. I figured I'd update it for you guys with some of the new terminology and some other things that I've kind of adapted to while using this system over the past three years. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you haven't yet, please hit that red Subscribe button below, hit the bell for notifications so every time that we upload a video, you will see it. And if you haven't yet, please go back and check out the fall season two. And for you guys getting excited for turkeys, you can also check out Chasing Thunder season one. You bet yeah, a Chasing Thunder season two is coming in 2021. So with that, I mean, see you guys in the next one.